I, 38-year-old Michael, got engaged to my fiancée, Emily, two months ago. Prior to that, we dated for five years, and she was the most kind-hearted woman I have ever met. Red flags didn't exist in her behavior, and she did everything to make the relationship smoother and remained loyal, even during the most difficult phase, which was long distance. I know it's the bare minimum to expect loyalty because it's a general responsibility, but in long-distance relationships, many people cheat often. She always made me feel light, and I never felt anxious after she made an appearance in my life. All of it changed when she proposed to me. We were happily engaged, looking forward to our dream wedding in Paris, and the days were getting closer and closer. There was this thing with Emily. She was insecure about her body. She considered herself to be overweight. Emily was the most beautiful woman in my eyes, but she always felt very unattractive about herself. I always tried my best to make her feel loved about herself as well as confident, but it rarely worked. As the days of the wedding were getting closer, her anxiety about her body image was increasing day by day, and it started bothering me. I finally decided to help her out. There were endless conversations between us where I assured her that she looked perfect the way she was. But somehow, she was not convinced and kept thinking about how she would look in the wedding gown. When the assurance didn't work, I asked her if she needed any help from me. She didn't say anything at first, so I asked her if she wanted a personal gym trainer who could help her achieve the body she wanted before the wedding. Her face lightened up with hope, and she hugged me. I didn't really want her to change because I really loved her chubbiness. It was cute and hot, but she was very happy and excited about it. She told me she had this thing on her mind, but she was hesitant to ask. I told her it was fine as long as it made her happy. She told me that her friend suggested a personal gym trainer named John, who also helped her get in shape. One thing about Emily's personality was that she always wanted to look good and feel good because, during her high school years, she was bullied by her friends due to her weight. That's what she told me when we went on our first date and I felt shocked by that because she looked gorgeous. I always saw her trying hard to fit in and show herself in a way that made her attractive to everyone. She felt empowered when someone complimented her, especially the opposite gender. At first, it bothered me that she didn't want to look good only for me, and my compliments were not enough to make her feel good. But then I realized that was because of the years of trauma she faced, and now she wanted to look good. She deserves to live her moment, and I was happy to give it to her. She only wanted to look beautiful in everyone's eyes, but she never flirted or showed any red flags. The day she joined the gym, I offered to drop her off. She asked me if I wanted to meet her trainer, but due to my busy schedule, I had to refuse. She was wearing tight shorts and a sports bra with a jacket. Her body shape could be seen because of her tight clothes, and I felt a bit uneasy because of that as there were many other alternatives instead of that. I looked at her and asked her if it was necessary to wear that instead of leggings. She told me that there was a dress code in the gym that she had to follow, as told by her friend, and I was pretty shocked to hear something like that for the first time, but I didn't think too much about it, as we were both actually happy because, from that day on, Emily was going to live with me. After the session ended, Emily called me and told me that she was leaving for work and asked me to pick her up after her evening session. After winding up my work, I picked her up and finally saw John. Like every gym trainer, he was fine, muscular, and very attractive. Emily gave him a side hug, and we both left. Things went fine for days, but then Emily was all preoccupied with the gym. She was spending more and more time in the gym, and there wasn't much talking between us. She was coming late every night, hanging out with the friends she made in the gym, and even after coming home, she was not really present. I started doubting her unintentionally. I was excited to live together and enjoy the courtship period, but things were going just the opposite of what I expected. Her behavior concerned me from time to time. She was really not interested in having any conversation with me, which was easily visible because of her replies whenever I asked her something or tried initiating anything. She looked really unhappy and disinterested in me, but she was pretty happy with her friends and John back at the gym. Whenever I got upset at her late comings or not giving time to us, she defended, saying we are going to live together for a lifetime, 
so I shouldn't be complaining about these small things. After thinking carefully and checking my own behavior, I initially thought I was toxic and suspicious for no reason. I should not make assumptions on my own. Talking it out would be better for both of us. Holding things inside can create an unintentional sense of resentment in my heart for her. So, I decided to talk to her and realized how badly she screwed up the whole thing. We had no lies, but Emily was indeed getting the figure she wanted, and she looked extremely hot and flattering. She was having a proper diet routine, and I decided to bake some cookies to get a chance for a conversation. I called her and asked her if she wanted me to pick her up, but she refused and told me she was already on her way. In her voice, she sounded really exhausted and somewhat stressed. I told her I wanted to talk to her. She didn't look happy at all and told me that she was not in the mood for any of this. I asked her what was wrong, and she started moving further. I couldn't control my anger anymore, and words came out of my mouth. I asked her if she enjoyed her time with John, as I already saw her social media post. Why does she never have time for me? She stopped walking towards the room and asked me if I wanted to feed her those cookies to get her fat again so she would become unattractive. She was just so mean and rude to me for no reason. I lost my temper and told her what I was thinking these days and how she had changed so much since the day she joined the gym. Instead of reassuring me, she started blaming me and told me that I was doubting her and that I never wanted her to look pretty. And that's the reason why I was trying to confine her. I was really shocked by her statement. She also said I could never relate to her, as I had never gone through what she had been through. It was another victim card she threw directly in my face and tried to make me feel guilty for hurting her. I told her that I just wanted her attention and quality time, and the conversation was never about me doubting her. I told her I was just jealous and never claimed or thought that she was cheating on me. I made those cookies to cherish her. She started weeping and apologizing to me like crazy. I never saw her like that. It was very new to me. I felt like she was in emotional turmoil. I asked her again and again if everything was all right, and she told me she and her best friend had an argument over some silly things, and her best friend had said some mean things to her. She was unleashing her best friend's anger on me. She apologized and told me she wanted to take a rest, and I gave her the space she needed. She lied. I know whenever she does, and it was a huge lie. We'll come to that later. I couldn't sleep at all and just kept changing positions, and she was facing up on the other side of the bed, facing towards the wall. She wasn't asleep either, and I wasn't able to draw any conclusions about her actions. The next day, I asked her to get ready to go to the gym, but she refused. I asked her if she had to quit the gym because of last night's fight with me. She smiled, hugged me, and told me that she was really tired and just didn't feel right. So she was avoiding the gym today. Her phone started buzzing, and it was John calling her. I asked her to pick it up and inform him, and she did. After hanging up the call, John called again three times, but she didn't pick up and went back to the room after having her breakfast. To be honest, that very moment, I got suspicious that the gym trainer was calling her so many times even after she told me that she was not going to come that day. I was finding my file in the cupboard, and suddenly, the book Emily was currently reading fell on the floor, and something inside the book peeped out and took my attention. It was contraceptive pills. My hands were shivering, and my heart was wishing that she hadn't used those. But the two pills had already been used. It was shocking for me because Emily and I never had sex without protection. We never did because she didn't want to take contraceptive pills because of their adverse effects, so we avoided doing it without protection. Seeing those pills made me nauseous. I put it back, left the place, and headed towards the office. I couldn't do anything with proper focus. Is she cheating on me with John? Was the first thing that came to mind, and I felt like crying loudly because instead of making assumptions, there was nothing I could do. Talking to her last time went pretty bad. There was nothing I could do instead of waiting for her to come and tell me on her own, and all of this altered my behavior toward her. She asked me whether I was okay. I just nodded and faked a smile. She thought that maybe I was just still upset because of her behavior last time. While having dinner, she asked me if everything was all right. 
I nodded yes, but after a while, I couldn't hold myself back and blurted out, Why did you start using contraceptive pills? I thought you were aware of the side effects, right? She turned pale, and her face was questioning me about how I discovered it. I said it didn't matter. Then she said the most classic line, I can explain. I told her to go ahead with her explanation. She told me that she was not getting her period for a month, so the doctor advised her to have contraceptives. My heart sank, and she lied again. My suspicions were getting bigger and bigger, and I knew that it was time for me to catch her red-handed. I asked her to show me her prescription and what type of doctor would suggest someone take contraceptive pills without a proper test. She couldn't say a word and told me that her prescription was at her place and that she would show it to me. She finished her food immediately and took the dishes from the table, trying to avoid any eye contact with me. What we had five years ago was turning into dust day by day, as our wedding day was getting closer and closer, and it was just two weeks away. But for some reason, we lost all happiness and excitement. It's been days since we sat and talked. It was the same usual morning. After refusing to go to the gym for a week, Emily asked me to drop her off. I drove her to the gym and saw the closed signboard. I asked her why she was coming today when the gym was closed, and she told me that she wanted to meet John because of the supplements he was going to give her. I left her there but my mind still hadn't left the day I found those pills in her book. I almost reached my office, and my instincts were telling me to take a U-turn. After resisting for a while, I decided to take a U-turn. I was not thinking straight. More like I was not thinking anything, just letting my instincts decide my next action. As I walked in, I saw her and her trainer, John, in a compromising position. My heart sank as John leaned in and was going to kiss her. Before that, my mouth let out a scream. Emily turned her head towards me, pushed him away, and realized she was indeed doing the exact thing that I was trying not to think of. She was actually cheating on me. I really loved the girl, and seeing her like that was unbelievable. My suspicions that grew day by day were not just some overthinking but reality. I really loved her, and I could imagine the biggest betrayal of my life. Two weeks before our wedding, the invitation card, which was already printed out, will be thrown in the garbage bin just like the way she threw our relationship over lusty guess. It was her way of giving me a cheat day. My legs went numb, and Emily followed me outside, asking me to give her a chance to explain. She was crying and weeping so loudly and kept telling me that she really loved me and that it was just a one-time mistake. Those words coming from her mouth were disgusting and uneasy to digest. I left the place immediately and had no tears to cry for her, just pure anger. It was the biggest trauma ever. Emily called me many times, and I didn't pick up at all because I had no energy to talk to her. I didn't go back to my place. Instead, I went to my parents' place. I've been staying here for the last two days while Emily is blowing up my phone, pleading and begging me to meet her. She knows I'm at my parents' house, but she dares not come here. She knows she would be exposed and humiliated in front of my family. My parents have got a whiff of the situation, I think. It's just two weeks before the wedding, and I'm staying here with them, leaving Emily alone in my apartment. I have not participated in any discussion about the wedding. I don't know how long I can hide this from them. I don't want to hide either, but I want to stabilize my emotions before breaking the news to anyone. After gaining this courage, I told my parents and sister about what happened and why I was calling off the wedding. My mother couldn't believe it, and she was completely devastated to hear that. She kept comforting me and told me it was just part of life and I shouldn't let it ruin my future. Instead, I should just accept my fate and continue with my life. And with time, everything would heal. I told her that time would indeed heal, but it would be without Emily. I spent my time there with them for a few days before I decided to get closure. I went back to my place, and as I opened the door, Emily ran towards me, hugged me tightly, and started sobbing loudly. I felt nothing towards her. She leaned over me and stayed there silently for a while, and I let her emotions flow out. In the last five years of our relationship, I have never left her to cry like that, but she was done making a victim of herself and it was high time for her to accept her actions. I sat there unmoved like a statue. Finally, when she was done crying, 
She freed my arms and confessed everything that happened. You need extreme strength to listen to your partner's confession about cheating. She told me that since the first day of her gym training, she felt attracted to him as he used to look at her seductively, and because of him, she felt attractive. He used to flirt with her and compliment her a lot. But it was only an attraction from her side, not in a romantic way. Things escalated slowly. While doing some exercises, he used to touch her. She couldn't help but keep her thoughts to herself, and it made her feel good. It was so hard for me to hear those things, and I asked her if I was not enough for her. She remained silent and told me that she really felt loved by me, and she also loved me, but sometimes she felt she wanted more. John's way of approaching convinced her to do something hideous like that. There, she brought up her past of being body-shamed and bullied again. I laughed hysterically at her remark and told her to stop using her past as a justification for her cheating, as it had nothing to do with morals. I told her that she loved attention and always liked to be seen, but I ignored this. She remained silent, filled with guilt and regret. She continued with her explanation and told me that one day, John and Emily were having fun while doing push-ups, and he started touching her. She tried resisting but gave in as it made her feel powerful and good about herself. She got possessed by her greed for attention and lost it. It was not safe sex, and that's why she had to take contraceptives. I almost broke into tears. She told me she was regretting her decision and decided not to visit the gym again. But it happened again and again until she thought I was getting suspicious. She didn't realize that she threw our wedding on fire just to feel good. I couldn't speak a word and sat there. I buried my face in my palms. Emily was holding my legs and sitting on the floor, claiming that she still loved me. She tried to hold my hand and lift my face, but I resisted and got disgusted by her touch. After I was done listening to her, I took the ring off my finger, placed it on the table, and told her that there would be no wedding. She was shocked as if I said something out of the blue, and after doing something like that, she should have expected this. She told me that I should not make an impulsive decision that I might regret later. I told her that what I regretted the most was trusting her blindly. I told her that I was glad that she regretted it, but there was nothing that could be done to fix this except completely cutting off our ties with each other. Our wedding wasn't some kind of comedy show, and neither were my feelings. She should get back to what she was trying to do, make herself look attractive or powerful. Now she is free to do anything, and there will be no confinement. She again started apologizing and kept on weeping. I yelled at her and told her to stay away from me and stop showing me fake love and concern. I left the place, and she followed me outside. I stopped, turned back, and told her to call her parents and inform them about this. The realization finally hit her that I was indeed calling the wedding off. I met my sister, and she told me to rethink it again so I might not regret it later because Emily does regret it a lot. She asked me to give myself some time and see if my emotions subsided, and I should try giving her a chance. I told her I was mindfully making this decision. Everyone was thinking that I was making an impulsive decision, but a person who could cheat on you once can do it twice. I do love her but no more than my self-worth and respect. I can't spend my whole life thinking my wife would be effing someone right now. Once the trust is gone, it's completely gone, and you are just stuck in prison. I was heartbroken, but I knew that I couldn't marry someone who had betrayed my trust in such a cruel way. I called off the wedding with a stone in my heart. I imagined my life, my afterlife, and everything with her, and it ended for good. I was happy that it happened before the wedding, but after marriage, it could have been way worse. It was painful, but I knew I deserved better than someone who could cheat on me over some insecurity. I'm keeping myself busy with work and traveling. To be honest, it isn't as bad as I thought it would be. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the story, like and subscribe. Email your story to us and become part of our community. For more stories, check out the next video on my channel. Take care.